This video is supported by Skillshare. New York City is known for its gleaming skyscrapers, but my favorite one by far is the Chrysler Building. Because not only is this building an Art Deco masterpiece, it was also the site of one of the most spiteful moves in architectural history. So this was the late 1920s and a whole bunch of different technologies had come together at the same time like steel construction and elevator technology that created something of an arms race to the sky. At the time the Woolworth building was the tallest building in New York and the world for that matter at 241 meters and it had held that title for 16 years and there were several buildings that were looking to replace it. One of them was the Chrysler building designed by William Van Allen who just as the construction began on that building had a falling out with his partner a guy named H. Craig Severance. Severus decided he was going to best his former partner and now bitter enemy, so he took on the construction of a rival building at 40 Wall Street. Throughout 1928 and 1929, the two buildings raced each other to the top, constantly changing their designs and adding floors to try to get a lead on the other one. And then when all was said and done, 40 Wall Street topped their building with a flagpole, raising their total height to 282 meters, a full 26 meters taller than the Chrysler building. And then on October 23rd, 1929, Van Allen surprised Severance and the rest of the world for that matter, when they raised a 38 meter spire up into the top of the Chrysler building. They had built it in secret on the inside and they stuck that thing up like a stainless steel middle finger, beat the 40 Wall Street building by 12 meters and it became the tallest building in the world. That is some next level spite. Ironically, the Chrysler building's big triumph was barely even mentioned in the press because the very next day, was the day of the great stock market crash of 1929 that set the Great Depression into motion. And just 11 months later, the Chrysler Building was superseded by the Empire State Building, which held the title of the tallest building in the world for the next 40 years. As long as there are people, we're gonna be reaching for the sky. But exactly how high can we go? Now before all the nitpickers come out of the comments and start telling me I'm wrong, I know you've already started, the Empire State Building was the tallest building for about 40 years. It was not, however, the tallest structure in the world during all that time. I will get into that right now as we look at the history of the tallest structures humans have ever built. To start off, hey, 40 years is a long time to hold the title as the world's largest structure, but that doesn't hold a candle to the Great Pyramid of Giza. Standing at 146 meters tall, the Great Pyramid was completed around 2650 BCE and it was the tallest structure in the world for nearly 4,000 years. It was finally bested by the Lincoln Cathedral in the UK in 1311, which stood 160 meters tall. This held the record for an impressive 573 years. Asterisk, the Lincoln Cathedral did actually lose its title in 1549 when a storm blew down one of its spires and several different churches came up over the years that became the tallest building in the world at the time, but none of them were taller than the 160 meters of the Lincoln Cathedral. That was not beat until 1884. When the Washington Monument was completed at 169 meters, this only held the title for five years before, the Eiffel Tower was completed in 1889 at a height of 300 meters, almost doubling the height of the Washington Monument. The Eiffel Tower was actually a turning point because it was the first structure made out of steel which showed the potential for the material. The Eiffel Tower was the tallest structure in the world for a solid 41 years until the aforementioned Chrysler Building raised that spire in 1929, officially opening its doors in 1930 at 319 meters tall, which makes it the first building in history to go over a thousand feet. Next came the Empire State Building just one year later at 381 meters tall. The Empire State Building was the first building tall enough that if you jumped off of it you would actually reach terminal velocity before you hit the ground. Don't test this, by the way, just, just trust me. Now, the Empire State Building was the tallest building in the world until the 1970s, but in the 1950s, it ushered in a wave of TV and radio technology and a boom in large communication towers. This includes the Griffin Television Tower at 480 meters in 1954, the KOBR TV Tower at 490 meters in 1956, and the Austin Kino Tower in Moscow at 537 meters in 1967. And finally, the Big Daddy, the Warsaw Tower in Poland in 1974 at 646 meters, which remained the tallest structure in the world until it fell in 1991, at which point the tallest structure became the CN Tower in Toronto at 553 meters. Now, if you want to talk buildings, meaning occupied buildings that people live and work in, the next one after the Empire State Building, like I mentioned before, was the World Trade Center, which topped out at 417 meters. This was eclipsed just three years later with the Sears Tower in Chicago, now it's called the Willis Tower, at 442 meters. This held the title for an impressive 25 years until 1998 when the Petronas Towers went up in Kuala Lumpur, which reached 451 meters, 
It was topped six years later in 2004 by the Taipei 101 tower at 509 meters. And then another six years later, the daddiest of all daddies, the current champion by a friggin' long shot, the Burj Khalifa. Opened in 2010, the Burj Khalifa is the tallest occupied floor, the tallest spire, tallest architectural element. It is, in fact, the tallest structure humans have ever built at 828 meters. The Burj Khalifa is so tall, you can watch a sunset from the ground, take the elevator to the observation deck, and watch the sunset again. They did this using a tapered triangular design that both increased window space and provided the best protection against resonance oscillation in the wind. Plus, it was calculated to properly distribute the enormous weight of the building. Several new construction techniques were pioneered in the Burj Khalifa, like innovative ways of getting concrete to the top floors of the building. These innovative techniques are going to come in handy in the upcoming years as people try to beat the Burj Khalifa. Some of these are actually under construction. Here they are in order of height. The first is the Burj Mubarak Al Kabir in Kuwait. This one is 1,001 meters tall, inspired by the book 1001 Arabian Nights. It will feature 234 floors of office and living space, including seven open-air gardens and three centers of worship. This one is really more in the planning phase right now and isn't expected to open until 2030. And for those paying attention, 1,001 meters is over one kilometer tall. But with still more than a decade before it's finished, it probably won't be the first to reach that milestone. That one may go to the next one on our list. The Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia, which is already under construction, should really just list its proposed height as ridiculous because that's basically what they're going for here. With 168 occupied floors, the Jeddah Tower will rise a minimum of 1,008 meters, though the actual height's being kept a secret. Also known as the Kingdom Tower, the Jeddah Tower is designed by Adrian Smith, who also designed the Burj Khalifa. It was originally planned to be one mile high, or 1,600 kilometers, but has since been scaled down. It's going up in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and will be part of an entire development called the Jeddah Economic City and the cost is $20 billion. But don't think Dubai is going to lose their crown without a fight. After all, over-the-top projects are kind of what they're known for now. So even as Jeddah Tower creeps up on them, Dubai's broken ground on the Dubai Creek Tower, a massive complex surrounding a cable tower planned to go as high as 1,400 meters tall, almost doubling the Burj Khalifa. It'll have 20 floors of residences, hotels, and retail with observation decks and sky gardens up above. It's designed by Santiago Calatrava and features the white cable arrays he's famous for, radiating out in a square formation similar to the Eiffel Tower. This complex will lie 18 kilometers away from the Burj Khalifa in downtown Dubai, and it's estimated to be finished in 2021, though it has gone through some delays. Now, one observation I would like to make is how the epicenter of super tall buildings has changed geographically over the years. And it goes to the very reason why we build these buildings in the first place. Having the tallest building in the world is a symbol of a nation's prosperity. It's a display of their economic and technological might. It helps frame that country in the minds of the rest of the world. You know, a bunch of churches in Europe in the Middle Ages. In the 20th century, it was the United States showing off. Around the millennium, Asia was showing its might. Now it's the Middle East. Some think in the future Africa will have its turn, and while there are several super tall buildings that they're constructing right now, none of them are quite tall enough to make this list. So those are the buildings that have actually begun construction or at least been financed, but there's also a lot of buildings that have been proposed and designed that push the limits of human engineering. The Tokyo Sky Mile Tower is one of a couple of mega projects aimed to turn Tokyo Bay into a livable real estate. Tokyo is a city that's bursting at the seams and one of the most densely populated places in the world. The Sky Mile Tower would not just be the tallest building in the world, it would actually be a milestone. The first mile high building at 1700 meters, 5,577 feet. It would house 55,000 people and be the centerpiece for a project called Next Tokyo, which aims to increase the city's footprint into Tokyo Bay. The building is also designed to be green and powered by solar wind and fuel made by algae farms in the bay. The Sky Mile Tower isn't the first proposed mile high building. In fact, Frank Lloyd Wright designed a building named the Illinois that would rise a mile high in 1957. It would have 528 floors equaling 18.4 million square feet of space, parking for 15,000 cars, and featured a tripod design, tuned mass dampener to counter the effects of the wind, and high-speed elevators, all way ahead of its time in 1957. The other project that aims to make use of Tokyo Bay is the Shimizu Mega City Pyramid, and this is starting to get into some really out there stuff. The Mega City Pyramid would rise 2,004 meters and have a base covering 8 square kilometers, and it would house between 500,000 and 750,000 people. And it's designed to be an entire operating city. Tucked into the geodesic pyramid design are multiple skyscrapers connected by tunnels that run through the beams of the pyramid's design. Its geometric design is stable enough to withstand earthquakes, and its open interior is designed to dissipate tsunamis, an important element in a city built on the Pacific Ring of Fire. But going back to Dubai for a minute, the Dubai City Towers is a proposed building that would rise 2,400 meters into the sky, literally three times taller than the Burj Khalifa. 
It would have 400 floors that are serviced not by elevators, but by a bullet train traveling at 340 kilometers an hour. It would be constructed of a central core with six outer cores spiraling up around it and connecting with the center every 100 floors, distributing the mass of the building and preventing wind oscillation. This is still in the planning stages and mostly just a demonstration of advanced building technologies. Ultima Tower brings us back to the United States where this design was created to ease the housing issues around the San Francisco Bay Area. It's meant to be an enclosed city for millions of people designed to mimic African termite mounds. It's basically a human-sized termite mound. How big is a human-sized termite mound, you might ask? 3,218 meters, or more than two miles high, and spreading out over 10 square kilometers at the base. Designed by Eugene Sui, it uses natural methods to create entire ecosystems inside the structure, cooling the inside by a series of waterfalls and rivers. The complex doesn't feature floors so much as 120 levels, each its own ecology, lakes, gardens, even hills. A series of mirrors would reflect the sunlight throughout the entire building and energy would be naturally generated. He wants to make Ultima Tower a benchmark for ecological living in the entire planet and cost $150 billion, about the same as the money spent so far in the International Space Station, and really close to the amount of rent somebody might spend on a 700 square foot apartment in San Francisco. But Ultima Tower is not the ultimate mega project. That belongs to the famed XSEED 4000, so named for being 4,000 meters tall, also known as 4 kilometers tall, or 2.5 miles, with a 6 kilometer wide base covering 36 square kilometers. It's designed to house 500,000 to a million people on 800 floors and would cost up to $1.2 trillion. Now, obviously, this is not a project that's remotely in the works. This was just an idea developed by Peter Neville. He wanted to see if he could find the limits of our current construction methods, and in the process, broke the record for the tallest building ever planned and blueprinted. This is truly an over-the-top futuristic idea. The XC-4000 would be taller than Mount Fuji and even need to be pressurized because the air pressure toward the top would be so small residents would have trouble breathing, so balconies are kind of out. The size would actually be big enough to disrupt weather patterns, so locations would matter. You wouldn't want to put it in a place where it would mess up the weather for a nearby city. And this really is about the best we can do with our current technology and engineering. Ultimately, the tallest thing you could possibly build would be a space elevator, which would extend out from the surface 100,000 kilometers. The design challenges around that are huge because you would basically have to use a counterweight floating out at geostationary orbit and connected by an impossibly long tether made out of some kind of material that we can't quite uh, do yet at mass level anyway. And it would also be vulnerable to space debris of which there are millions of pieces out there. I talked about all this in a previous video. And then there's the idea of building mega projects in space like ring worlds and entire arcologies that would orbit the earth or travel out to other planets. Does that count as building up? It's certainly fun to think about. It's gonna be really interesting watching the next generation of super tall buildings raising their middle finger spirals into the sky on a wave of spite. By the way, there are a ton of proposals and designs for buildings out there that I had to leave off this list just for time. So if there's a favorite of yours that I didn't mention, please bring it up down in the comments below and tell me, would you wanna live in one of these buildings? Why or why not? Discuss. Or if you think you could top these ideas, or just like this subject because you're into architecture and whatnot, you can learn a lot more about how to build your own building at Skillshare. Specifically, there are tons of classes on Skillshare for a program called SketchUp, which is something that both the pros and hobbyists use to kind of design buildings and uh, create renovation projects. One class you might want to check out is SketchUp Architect from 2D Plans to 3D Models by Thomas Soltron. Thomas has been working as an architect for 20 years and is an expert not just on the program, but how to implement it into real plans. Along the way, he gives you pro tips on how to create beautiful mock-ups of buildings and to get your vision just right. Not into architecture? Skillshare is still worth checking out. They got over 25,000 videos on everything from how to play an instrument to design to business, you name it. Whatever you're interested in, there's something you can learn about it at Skillshare. It's only $10 a month with the annual subscription, but if you sign up at the link down in the description of this video, you can get two free months from Skillshare. You can learn a lot in two months. Anyway, go check it out by typing this into your internet machine or just clicking the link in the description down below. I think you'll like it. All right, thanks to Skillshare for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon who are building a community, keeping the lights on around here, and just overwhelmingly uh, being awesome. There's some new people that have joined the tribe. Let me murder their names real quick. We got Marcus Dentry, Demetrius Horondas, Victor Ramstrom, Clinton Billido, or Billido, uh, Brad Dargadarian, <laughs> I think, Ian Nussfinger, uh, Taylor Mayfield, Keith Miller, Amor Kawar, Kevin Paulson, Larry D. Duke, Carl Hayes, Augustine Centeno, Yonder, and Colton Moss. 
Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos and behind the scenes stuff and just access to me in general, then you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video because Google, Google thinks you'll like that one. Google, I said Google. Or you can check out any of my other videos. And if you like those, if you like the cut of my jib, you can subscribe, please do. I come back with videos every Monday and every Thursday. T-shirts available in the store at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.